So when it comes to AI voice and text-to-speech, I think that we can all agree that while amazing, you know, performances can be on the flat side. Well, I've got good news on that front. We've got a new text-to-speech model, and it solves that very issue. Plus, it's coming in with a pretty generous free tier, and on the paid side is lower than anything else on the market right now. All right, let's go check it out. So the gang at Hume got in touch with me to see if I wanted to check out their latest voice model, Octave. And actually, that works out for all of us because I got to bug them with a bunch of questions. Now, you might not be familiar with Hume, but they they didn't pop up overnight. In fact, they've actually been around for quite some time, uh, just more on the developer side. But we're mostly going to be focusing on Octave because this is their first step into well, like the creator toolkit. So Octave, or Omni-Capable Text and Voice Engine, is their new model that balances linguistic accuracy with emotional understanding. They basically explained it to me that it's sort of a marriage between an LLM and a diffusion model. And that is the key difference with Octave, is that it's not merely reading the words that it sees put out in front of it, but rather actually has a contextual understanding of what those words mean. So let's take a look at Octave, or should I say a listen to Octave, with a quick little short that I cribbed together. It was just five minutes from my shift ending when I got the call to the scene. What I saw that night, I'll never forget it. This was a mistake. I don't think I want to talk about it. That's totally normal, but... You did come here, so I think a part of you does want to talk about it. Doc, have you ever seen the devil? Because that night, I did. So to note, yes, the lip sync is a little bit off there. I actually ended up using Kling for that. Still on the hunt for, you know, a state-of-the-art lip sync model. But overall, I was really impressed with how Octave provided, well, some emoting to our characters' voices. Uh, let's head over to Hume to see what else we can do. When we first arrive at Hume, you can just try it out. Uh, you have a voice uh, prompt here and a script prompt down here. You can also randomize. Let's just generate this up and see what we get. This city never sleeps, but I do. Usually with a glass of something amber and a gun under my pillow. Ah, just in case. I know it totally sounds like that's something that I would have written. I promise you, that was actually randomized. We also have a speech-to-speech -speech model up here in which you can you know, play around with a real-time conversation with one of the models. Um, you just hit the talk with one of the personalities. You can choose one of them. Uh, let's go with Kara here, and then choose which language model you want to play around with. Uh, there's Claude, um, Hume, Llama, Llama, GPT-4, and Gemini 1.5 Flash. Uh, let's, start, let's go with GPT. Why not? Hey, what's going on? Hey there, not much. Just here and ready to chat with you. What's on your mind? Uh, you know, I was wondering, do you remember the old ChatGPT voice, Sky? Ah, uh, feeling nostalgic, huh? Sky did have a certain charm, didn't it? What do you miss most about that voice? The fact that it was taken away from us. Now, you'll note that in my dialogue and in the responses, there's actually... Uh, tags in terms of essentially our emotion it begins with interest there's some confusion and then some nostalgia uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit but for now we're just going to hop into the main event uh, we're going to click on go to app and that will bring us over to the octave model so within the platform there are a number of different spots that we can go to uh, voice designing or playground we'll start off with the playground as a quick note ev2 or the empathetic voice interface down here it's kind of a whole other thing definitely cool something we will dig into at some point uh for now just make sure that you hit the playground button up here which brings us to honestly where we'll spend most of our time uh if you hit select voice over here there are a number of preset voices that we can choose from uh there's some pretty good ones too some of my favorites so far are the wise wizard by the ancient starlight of eldritch lore must I truly endure such babbling drivel? We also have Dungeon Master, which actually sounds like a personal attack on my high school years. As a matter of fact, your dexterity is 17, which gives you a plus three to all your ranged attack rolls. You know what's really funny about that? That's true. A dexterity of 17 does give you a plus three modifier. So whoever wrote that prompt, listen, props to you. Uh, I love the fact that you went the extra mile. I should point out that they're not all like silly voices. Uh, in fact, actually, nature documentary guy here. Uh, this like sounds legitimately like a nature documentary guy. Here, amidst the whispering leaves and ancient trees, we discover nature's delicate balance in its most vibrant form. 
So yeah, that is a, you know, pretty solid swing at a Nat Geo type voice. Now, you know, given there is a pretty good variety of voices here, obviously that does not cover, you know, all of the voices in the world. And really that is where the voice design comes into play. So this part is actually super fun. I actually just hit the randomize here and it kind of gave me a trailer guy's voice. Uh, let's go ahead and generate and see what we get for an individualized trailer guy voice. In a world consumed by shadows, one voice will rise above the darkness, but can it save us all? And there you go. We can now bring the narration guy back to all of our AI generated film trailers. From there, we just hit save voice and now he exists in our library. Testing it out a little more with a conversational, slightly slurred and ironic American accent. Uh, let's give this a listen. I got a question. If you guys know so much about women, how come you're here at like the gas and sip on a Saturday night completely alone drinking beers with no women anywhere? The answer, of course, being by choice. If you know the quote, drop it in the comments. Now, a couple of interesting tricks here. I popped into the text for the opening to Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. And in the voice prompt, if I just hit auto-generate here, it'll come up with something that makes sense for that. Because once again, Octave is aware of what the text says. Uh, so in this case, it's a rich, intense voice like a gothic literature professor. Uh, so let's go ahead and generate some samples. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. So yeah, that is pretty on point. Granted, that is pretty much a softball. So let's see if we can flip things around a little bit. So swapping the prompt out to the speaker has the voice of a bored high school student giving a report. Uh, we end up with this. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give that a one and nailed it. Once you do have a voice that you like, uh, in this case, we're going to use Charming Cowgirl here. Um, give a listen to her real quick. The real kicker? You can spin up any dang voice you can dream up with just a prompt, because you see it's one of the LLM things, and that's just what they do. So issuing the text-to-speech prompt of, I think I just saw a mime lurking around the corner, and now I'm feeling pretty uneasy about it, aren't we all? Uh, you can actually provide acting instructions over here. Uh, or you can just auto generate and it will read the, t you know, the, the text prompt and give acting directions based off of that, uh, expresses a sense of unease tinged with apprehension, suspicion, and a hint of growing fear. Yeah, sure. But more so than that, if we come down to the enhanced text, uh, because the model actually knows who the voice is, uh, we can actually rewrite our text, uh, so that it will match the character's voice better so uh, let's take a listen to this well i just reckon i saw a mime slinking around the corner and now i'm feeling right uneasy about it yeah that kind of nailed it i will admit just like image and video generation it might take you a couple of roles and some prompt adjustments before you know you find the exact performance that you're looking for but, you know, again, it's AI generated. That's just kind of how the dice rolls. Now, for longer projects, maybe like your five to 10 minute long AI generated short film or, you know, possibly a podcast or a audiobook, uh, there is projects as well. Although I will say that this is part of the paid tier. Uh, that said, you're going to be fairly surprised at how little that is. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, just to test things out with projects, I ended up generating uh, the opening to the Alan Wake novel written by Donka Mindy. That is a completely fictitious novelization of the game. Uh, Longtime viewers, you may remember, we were generating up book covers and one of the image models hallucinated with an author named Donka Mindy. I, I just, I, I'm tickled by that and I will continue to use it as often as I can. Let's take a quick listen to the opening of, again, this fictitious audiobook. While the echo of my footsteps carried hints of a story waiting to be told, somewhere between the flicker of street lamps and the murmur of the pines, I sensed that every whispered legend had a kernel of truth and that my own story was inextricably woven into the eerie tapestry of this cursed place. What's actually cool is that we can actually change voices in here as well. Uh, so for example, the majority of it is obviously read by our Alan Wake author, uh, but this only the Keeper of Secrets. Uh, I actually just assigned that to Sitcom Girl just so that we could definitely hear a difference between the two. So uh, let's give that a listen real quick. The voice, smooth yet laced with an eerie familiarity, replied, Only the Keeper of Secrets. 
The words echoed off the weathered facades of abandoned buildings. Now, I know not everyone loves that style of audiobook where each of the characters actually does have a different voice. Uh, but, you know, if you do like it, you can pull it off with Octave now. And for every one of the lines, you can, of course, add in your own acting instructions as well. Though, listening through this, it, it does seem like, again, the model is aware of the text. Uh, so it does a pretty good job of kind of doing ebbs and flows in terms of, you know, the pacing of its narration. And now for the part that I'm sure you all have been waiting for, you know, how much does this cost? Well, the free plan offers uh, 10,000 characters of text to speech or about 10 minutes and unlimited customer voices. Again, totally for free. So that is definitely enough if you're you know going to do a AI generated like short film that should probably cover you you know just on the free plan the starter plan is only three dollars a month uh, from there you go up to ten dollars to fifty dollars you can scale up to one hundred and fifty to nine hundred dollars. Chances are you're probably going to be doing more like, you know, mass ebooks if you're up in that level. So I honestly think that you probably are going to be able to get away anywhere between, you know, free and creator and, and probably get, you know, everything that you need to get done with those plans. And of course, Hume and Octave are just getting started. I have talked to them. There are going to be, you know, more features added in as time goes on. But in the meantime, I mean, high recommendation just to go over and check it out. I mean, you've got 10,000 credits to burn just for free, so you might as well give it a shot. I will be covering Hume and Octave as it continues to evolve. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just on the hunt for a better lip sync model. Uh, if you know of a good lip sync model, let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.